a couple of remarks uh, to begin with. So you know that we are now currently in the middle of process of significantly deepening our uh, relations with the European Union. Uh, and here the, the, the um, I, I should recall the statement uh, of the Prime Minister of Republic of Armenia in the European Parliament. We are ready to uh, get close to the European uh, Union as much as uh, that it would be uh, acceptable uh, from the side of European Union. So this is probably the most uh, correct formulation of the current state of our relations. Um, we have the SIPA agreement. Now we explore uh, things that could be done jointly with things which are beyond the SIPA uh, uh, agreement, as you can uh, assume. We have the economic and investment plan. We have the flagship initiatives, but um, uh, which is currently being discussed between us and the European Union. We call it support to resilience of Republic of Armenia, because we know that the processes which are going on worldwide, but specifically in our region, may have some um, unpredictable, um, or on the other hand, some people think, inevitable uh, consequences. And uh, to meet these challenges, uh, EU should and we jointly should uh, raise the level of resilience of Republic of Armenia, including the economic resilience, because we know that uh, we can have some um, uh, uh, challenges in spheres of en energy supplies, we can have challenges in spheres of, uh, in sense of selling our goods to the traditional markets. Uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is a very deep understanding what can be and what we should do jointly uh, in terms of Armenia EU relations, and we are moving in the right direction. Where this path will uh, bring us, uh, probably it would be difficult to tell right now, but we are open for uh, many possibilities and opportunities. So. What can I add to this conversation is that the people of, of Republic of Armenia, they do have European aspirations, and uh, we will be, be guided by these aspirations. So uh, coming to the, uh, the challenges to the regional affairs, you know that we negotiate with Azerbaijan over a peace treaty. Uh, there are a couple of um, crucial points there, provisions there, uh, where the positions of sides are still far from each other. Uh, and first of all, this is about the mutual recognition of territorial integrity and uh, the basis of the further process of delimitation. Uh, as you can um, uh, see, if you uh, analyze the <coughs> several meetings, high-level meetings, uh, but not only bilateral meetings, the trilateral, quadrilateral meetings with participation of my Prime Minister, President of Azerbaijan, mm -hmm. in some cases of President Michel of EU, but also President uh, Macron of France, uh, uh, Chancellor of Germany. Um, in one case, it was the meeting uh, with participation of Russian President. So as a result, in result of these meetings, uh, you know that they usually can issue public statements. So uh, in these statements, my prime minister, and which is more important in this context, president of Azerbaijan, they reconfirmed that the two countries recognize each other's territorial integrity according to the Almaty Declaration. For those who don't know, this is a declaration which was signed by 11 former USSR republics it was a sort of a divorce document, civilized divorce document. So in this Almaty Declaration, the 11 countries, they, uh, first of all, they recognize that Soviet Union uh, stops existing. 
And then, among other things, they recognized that the former administrative boundaries between them as Soviet Socialist Republics now become the re international recognized uh, interstate uh, borders between newly independent states. So Armenia and Azerbaijan were among these countries. So they reconfirmed this uh, recognition and they also said that Almaty Declaration should be the basis of further delimitation process, which means basically, to put the long story short, is that the delimitation uh, commissions should only recover, reproduce the borderline which existed by the collapse uh, in 1991, by the, the time of collapse of Soviet Union. So this is the, the story. The second crucial point where we do not have the common uh, understanding is about connectivity. We are not only open, we are not only ready to give this access, but we are interested in uh, uh, becoming a part of international transit. That's why we came up with an initiative we call it Crossroads of Peace. So what is this about? This is about Armenia's readiness to provide, uh, to grant access to Azerbaijan, but also other countries to use our territory to pass through. Um, and this goes uh, both uh, for, uh, for um, passengers, but also, I mean people, but also cargo. Uh, and we believe that this unblocking of the uh, uh, regional transport infrastructure should take place according to or in full respect with our sovereignty, with our uh, national jurisdiction, but also theirs as well, of course, and also according to the principles of reciprocity and equality. So not only Azerbaijan should have the opportunity to cross our territory to send their cargo to Nakhijevan or elsewhere to Turkey, but also Armenia should have the access and the opportunity to use their infrastructure.